All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at null objects. Now, at first, you might not think null objects are that interesting, but hopefully by the end of this video, uh, you will see that they are interesting and have a variety of different uses from modeling to materials. Uh, we can make things easier when it comes to animation, um, all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is the file I'm going to be working with today. Um, some of these are examples I've used previously. Something like the bottle here is something I've um, just grabbed from the content browser. Uh, but really the star of the show or the video is the null object. Now, like I said, it first may not seem that interesting. These are really meant to be used for something else, whether it's for grouping and parenting, whether it's to make life easier with um, something specific when it comes to modeling or animation. Um, that is what we're going to see. But just to talk a little bit about the null object itself. It doesn't really have too many object properties. I'll come back to this in just a second. Um, it does, however, have all of our normal transforms. So our position properties, our rotation properties, and all scale, our scale properties, all of which can be animated, okay? In the object tab, really what we can do is change the shape of the null or the way it looks in our perspective view as there really is no geometry associated with it so it won't render. Um, now I'm gonna move this just outside the origin here to show you that a null object actually is visible in our perspective view and so hopefully that's coming through in the video but it's just this little dot, okay? And you can change that um, by changing the shape and from this drop down menu you will see we have a variety of different options here so you could switch it to none if you don't want to see anything at all you can use say a locator or a circle so if you were doing something a little bit more advanced with the grouping or using a null to help create a rig that's where a lot of these um, shapes can come in handy uh, they can also make it easier to see the null to the to select the null all of that good stuff okay so that is little bit about the null itself and I use them a lot for organization. Um, in my scene files for instance, if you've seen um, a number of my videos, I usually have a null with say geometry in it um, and in this case I have you know different examples um, that we'll be talking about here very shortly uh, and then also a null for scene objects. That can be lights, that can be cameras, it could be floors or backgrounds, you name it, okay? And this allows me to very quickly hide elements that I do not want to be visible. So in a lot of circumstances, I don't want my camera or my lights to be visible because they can just get in my way as I'm navigating around, moving my scene. I don't want to actually see these um, you know, as I'm working on it. So I can just set that top stoplight to red and that helps get rid of everything. So that's a big part of working with nulls is organization. And because of these stoplights, you can really think of a null um, is a layer, okay? Um, and that makes it easy uh, to maybe tie it back into, say, something you're familiar with if you're coming from Adobe products, where we can, you know, take a layer, we can hide it, we can um, make it visible, I'm sorry, invisible to our perspective view, invisible to our render view for that bottom stoplight there. Now, there is a hierarchy to these stoplights, and so that's why even when I hid the geometry here, um, we're still seeing the car. And that's because if we go into the car here, um, we will see that it's being shown to be visible. So that is something you need to keep in mind here uh, with the stoplights that uh, just because the null is set to hide, if there is something inside set to visible, um, you know, we will see it instead. And that is really where um, using the control key uh, can help with the stoplight. So the control key will set the stoplights on everything inside to the same um, value. And so that can be very helpful if you do run into a situation like that. Typically though, when it comes to these stoplights, I only recommend just using the ones at the topmost layer and toggling those on or off. Um, because what I could do now is with the geometry null stoplight set to red, I could then come back in and turn on my individual um, examples and hide and show those while hiding everything else. But while the control is useful, I don't recommend, you know, hiding every single thing or showing every single thing, just work on the level uh, that you are currently using. So that's nulls, that's organization. You know, keep in mind, we do have layers in Cinema 4D as well. Um, and 
they offer a lot of the same advantages that nulls have, albeit with layers. Um, and maybe one day I'll make a video about those, but honestly, I don't use them all that much because nulls do such a good job at this. So let's talk about nulls with materials. Well, you know, I had a video not too long ago about how to model this specific shield. And let's say we had a bunch of rivets like we have right here. Okay. If, if you were just kind of doing this um, without nulls or without grouping, you may decide just to apply um, a material to every single rivet. Okay. And that can take a little bit of time having to go through and copy all these out. Not only that, each of these different material tags has their own set of properties. So, um, you know, different projection types, predict, uh, projection sizes, if you adjust the, the scale there, um, or the number of tiles. So they could all end up looking different. Um, not only that, applying uh, a material to this many objects can take a decent amount of time. So instead, if we group these, say put them in a null, uh, we can then apply that material tag to the null and it will apply to everything inside of it. Okay, and once again, hierarchy is important here because if there is an object inside that has its own material, um, well, that is what's going to show, okay, its own material and not the one on its parent. So that's why these, um, we don't want them to have a material. But with this um, situation, I can now adjust the projection to whatever I want, cubic or spherical perhaps, um, adjust the tiles, any of that stuff, and it's going to apply to all of the rivets inside of it and not just um, the, you know, the one sphere that uh, this material tag is applied to. So really, really helpful, a nice, easy way to apply the same material to multiple objects at once. And so that's how we can use nulls to help us with the material process. Okay, next up, um, animation, or at least one of the ways we'll see about animation. Um, honestly, you know, the, our next example with deformers could also count as animation, but I'm going to hide that one for now. Hide material since we're done with that. And now we have a car. And what I'm going to do with this car is use the align to spline tag to get it to move along um, our sweep here. So I'm going to take my car. Okay. And the way I've set this up is all the different elements of the car. Okay. Are inside of a null already. And then I've placed that inside of another null. And you may go, well, that seems kind of a bit ridiculous. Okay, well, let me show you why it's not. If I right click on this null, I go to animation tags, I go to align to spline, and then um, use my car spline as my spline path here. Okay, um, click tangential. All right, interestingly, it's not working. Let's try the actual spline and not the Oh, yeah, no, I did it right. Okay, there we go. So it didn't like the instance for whatever reason. So get rid of that. So on this null, um, I've added this. And okay, that's all right. Not quite what I had in mind, but thankfully we have our axis here. All right, okay, that looks better. Um, but you can't rotate it. Okay, so this is kind of going the opposite way along our spline. So if I wanted it to go this way, great, I'm all set, all right? But if I want it to go the other way, well, there's not much I can do. I could maybe select all these elements and rotate them. Perhaps that would work, okay? Maybe it will, all right? In this case, it looks like maybe it did. But a better way of doing this, because maybe it isn't just the rotation, maybe it's the position as well. Um, now that everything's in a null, okay, if I redo this really quick and place that align to spline on the null, use our car spline again. Okay, you can see everything's a little bit off just because I moved some things around, but that's actually not that big of a deal. Um, turn on tangential X because I can select the null now and rotate this to get it to face the direction I want. And you'll, no you'll notice. It's following it, but there is a difference where our null is located relative um, to the car. So what I can do, though, is just move what's inside. So I'm going to go to zero here so I can do my best to kind of line this up a little bit better. Maybe even go to a top view here to really get this 
as good as I want. I can even rotate this as well. That's the advantage of having this null inside here is that I can make these little adjustments. You know, if the car's going through the road, great. Move it up until it's not. All right. Back in the align to spline tag. Now I have this in, and it almost now looks like it's kind of sliding along um, the road here. So once again, all comes down to where I place that null. If I pull this back a little bit, you can see now it's doing that sliding even worse. So that is the advantage of having all of these elements inside a null and the align to spline tag up top here um, is that, there we go. Uh, you have that little bit of extra control if you need to move something a little bit, rotate it just a touch, whatever the case may be. So that is another example where nulls can come in handy. Um, also with animation, and this isn't necessarily the best example of it, so why don't I, yeah, I'll show it in deformers, okay? So we'll kind of keep talking about animation, but also talk about deformers here. So first, when it comes to animation with nulls, another thing that's really important is they allow us to animate further up the chain and animate fewer objects. So here's a bottle that I just grabbed from the object manager. I'm sorry, asset browser right here. Just type in package. There it is. Um, you'll notice it's made up of a bunch of different pieces inside. Okay, great. Um, no problem. Put it all in a null. And that way, as I move the null, everything comes along with it, except my deformers. If I was to animate this, everything would animate kind of, sort of. Okay, um, but by animating further up the chain here, even something like this null here uh, for its position, for its rotation properties, so I would want to center this axis. So why don't I just quickly kind of cheat it? There we go. Just put out a video about the axis tools if you're curious about how I did that. Um, but by animating so far up kind of the chain up the hierarchy here, it allows me to help keep my object manager organized. So that way I'm not having to go through and find everything through a really long, complicated object manager, right? So if everything here is expanded and you know have all of these different elements, it can be hard to find the, the object with the keyframes, okay, that I need to come back in here and select and work on. But if everything's collapsed, if everything's well organized, it keeps my object manager nice and clean. It makes it easier to find what I want. And typically, if you um, watch closely with a lot of my videos, I make most of my selections in the object manager. So the more organized it is, the quicker I can navigate this, the quicker I'm going to be able to work and make my selections. So animating as far up the hierarchy or chain uh, that is possible can be very useful. Um, and then also, specifically deformers here. So this bottle, like I said, is made up of several different pieces from the cap, from the bottle um, to the, I guess the beer that is inside of it, though I honestly didn't know there was any. Um, if I want to use a deformer, uh, you know, I've talked about there are two ways to use deformers, either as a child um, or a peer. So um, a child would be, for instance, if I take a bend object, make it a child, do fit to parent, Make sure this cube actually has a few different segments. And, you know, then I can bend this. Well, this only works on one item. Okay. In the case of the bottle here, it's made up of several items. And that's where deformers can work as long as they are a peer. So on the same level as everything else we want them to work on and have the same parent. And that allows me to use a single twist. So if I use the twist here, you can see that, yep, this is twisting. Now it's breaking a little bit because. I think the labels here don't have quite the number of segments that um, other things have. I also think there's multiple label sets here, so we don't need to see all of those. But overall, that's working pretty good. If I just come in here and twist, okay? So it's twisting everything, the label, the bottle, the cap, all of that good stuff. One deformer, one thing to animate. Same with squash and stretch. Come in here, set the factor. You can see it's breaking a little bit. So I would definitely want to keep an eye on the segments for all of these objects. But overall, this is doing a pretty darn good job of animating 
And once again, I'm using this single deformer um, on multiple objects. And nulls are what's helping me do this because the entire bottle is in a null. And all of that is in a separate null called deformers, or really it could be called bottle, which then allows me to move it, animate it, moving, scaling, or rotating um, very quickly and easily and very easy to find. So that is how we can um, use nulls with deformers, as well as a little bit more about animation. Okay, another part we or thing we can use nulls for is with cameras and lights. So uh, now that Redshift is becoming kind of the the default renderer almost in Cinema 4D, you know, in our cameras here we no longer have a target camera. Okay, in our lights I don't think we have a target light. So if you wanted to make those objects. You could use a null. You wouldn't have to use a null, but I would definitely recommend it. Uh, and so I here I have a null um, just to make it easier to see. Uh, let's create a, um, we'll just do a circle. Okay, make sure it's visible. There it is. And in fact, I'm just gonna make all this stuff visible for this next example. And what you can do, and you can do this exact same thing to a light or a camera. So I'll start with the light. I'm gonna right click on the light, go to animation tags and choose target. So I've added a target tag and what I can do is just call this, drag my null into the target object. And now that light, or if I was to duplicate this tag onto my camera, are both gonna look at this null and wherever I move it. Okay, so there's your target light, there's your target camera. Shoot, why don't we just call this target? And there you have it. And like I said, you don't have to use a null for this. You could use a piece of geometry. You could use uh, another null that, you know, the materials null, right, for the camera. Um, the reason why I wouldn't do that is um, just because you may want to do something different with this null. You may not want to, to move this at all because it's gonna move the shield uh, where perhaps you want a little bit of, um, different control over the, the position of this so that you could do something different. And if the shield's moving one way, you want the target to move um, separate. Okay, so that's another little tidbit or, or place where a null can come in handy. Last thing I'll mention about nulls um, is the basic tab. And this can work in a couple of different ways. One, you can actually load in a different icon for a null. So for instance, you have some built in. Um, if you wanted it to be, you know, for a controller or whatever, you can change the icon there. You can also change the color of these icons, which can make it a little bit more fun and interesting. And even nulls in general, you can change the color of by choosing the display color here. If you say custom and then change this, um, I believe you can also load in a color if you also, you have to, yeah, I think you also have to switch it up here to custom, although, okay, looks like things might've changed since the last time I did this. So it's not using the display color. So that can be set to automatic, but we can just use the custom color here and choose the null that way. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know and take care.